For this video, drawing video, what we're going to look at is the enlargement and reduction of a particular type of moulding detail. Now the position for this moulding detail is down from the top of the sheet 160 millimetres to the XY line and in from the left hand side of the sheet 200 millimetres to the bottom left hand corner of the moulding. So that's down 160 millimetres and in to the bottom left hand corner of the moulding 200 millimetres. The thickness of the moulding detail is 25 millimetres. The height of the moulding detail is 70 millimetres. Now the details here are 10 millimetres across for the top, 5 millimetres down. Then you have a quadrant here, 10 millimetre quadrant. So you're stepping down 10 millimetres bringing a light line across and drawing this quadrant in. 10 millimeter radius. Then you have a five millimeter return. Okay, so that's 10 millimeters, drop five millimeters, a 10 millimeter radius for a quadrant, and then five millimeters across. And then you're moving down 10 millimeters and you're stepping, this gap here is five millimeters, but you're stepping in three millimeters. So down, down 10, then five, and stepping in three millimeters to this point here. Okay, so that's the shape of the molding that you are going to uh, enlarge and decrease. So, okay, so, what am I going to uh, enlarge it to? Well, I'm going to enlarge that proportionally to 100 millimeters in height, and I'm also going to it reduce it to 50 millimeters in height. And there'll be proportional, um, obviously, increasing and reducing of the molding detail. So I simply step up from the XY line and I draw a light line across to the height of. 100 millimeters. I also step up from the XY line and I draw a light line across 50 millimeters. So they are going to be the height lines of my two uh, new molding details by way of the proportioned uh, reduction and increasing of the molding. So first of all I'm going to increase the molding details. So what I want to do is to select a position that's going to be suitable for the sheet. So obviously I don't want to encroach on the elevation of the molding detail that I've drawn here. I want the uh, the increasing uh, of the molding detail by where the new the new molding detail here increased to 100 millimeters and it's at a suitable distance that that it's uh, obviously not encroaching on the uh, molding detail that's already drawn. Likewise, on the smaller detail here, I want to draw it in such a way that it's not going to encroach on this particular molding detail that I've already drawn. So how I do that is I select the point anywhere here and just basically randomly selecting a point here by which I then, on the 100 millimeter line here, I go through the top of this point here. This is the top point here on the left hand side of the of the molding detail here. So from the top here through that point here. And what I'm simply looking for is a line that is going to hit my XY line here at a, on a reasonable basis, right? And it's going to give me a height here. So I know I've got a decent distance here for the uh, reduction of it, okay? And I've also got the beginning point of my enlargement of the uh, molding detail. Okay, so I'm selected, there's no particular point. If I went too close to this, just see what happens here. If I go too close to this and I bring it down to this point here, I can still do the same thing. I can still in increase it proportionally and reduce it proportionally. But what I'm doing here is I'm bringing in this particular uh, re reduction of the molding detail closer to what I've already drawn here and it's going to encroach on the actual uh, molding detail that I've already drawn. So the reason why I'm, I'm selecting a point a little bit further out is because it enables me to move that piece out. 
so that it's not encroaching on this particular molding detail. Okay, so I'm selecting a point here. Now, it happens to be, if you want to follow what I'm doing here, it happens to be 30 millimeters away from the original molding detail. Now, that's pure, purely accidental. I selected this point here so that it would suit, um, obviously, the reduction of the molding detail. Um, um, so, so that's how I selected it. But it, I could have selected it if I selected it at this point here. Okay, see the way it moves then the, the, what's going to be the, um, the uh, spectator point or the, the point from which I'm going to take all my points, it moves it towards the end of the sheet. So I don't want to, to have to draw a, a longer line than I have to. So that's why I moved it back to a point that's more suitable. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply draw from this point here and draw through the top here down to the elevation. Now, I've got the 100 millimeter height line. I selected that point so that it would be so, so that I'd have a reduction suitable. So I've got my 45 or 50 millimeter line here and my 100 millimeter height line here. Okay, so that gives me this point here. This point here on on the X Y line. And that is going to be the point from which I take all my other points through. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, first of all, um, create a grid. So I've got my, my this is my, going to be my height line here for my new molding detail, the enhancement or the enlargement of the molding detail here. So this is going to be my new height here for the enlargement of the molding detail. And this is going to be my new height here for the reduction of the molding detail. So this is 100 millimeters now in height, and this is 40, or sorry, this is 50 millimeters in height. So 100 millimeters in height for the enlargement of the molding detail, and 50 millimeters in height for the reduction of the molding detail. So the first thing I do is I divide this original molding into a grid. How do I do that? Very simply, I take the widths, all the details and the widths, and I spring them down. Okay, so all of those details, I bring them down. Uh, there's one more width here. That's the three millimeter width on the side. Okay, bring them down. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a grid. Then on the heights, I bring across. Do all of those details on the molding. I'm creating a grid. Now, in effect, what I'm doing is I'm bringing all of these points on the molding back to this height line here. I'm bringing all the widths on the molding down to the base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing them around onto this line here, which is the, basically the height line line, and I'm bringing that down. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the division the there in um, a different color here. So I'm going to use I'm going to use um, a red ink pen. You can see here now the grid that I've created and the important line now is, is this line here. So I'm going to continue that line down. Okay, so this line down. Now, for the width here now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these widths that I've generated on the bottom of the molding detail here, I'm going to pull them around onto this vertical line here that I've drawn down. So, I start with the overall width, and I swing that around. Then I go into the next width, which is this part here, and I swing that around. Then I go to the next width, here, There's this point here, swing that around, and then I go to the last width, which is this point here, and I swing that around. Now, I could also use a 45 degree set square and simply bring all those points across. 
okay and I might do that for the smaller one uh, because it's more difficult to use the compass on, on smaller radiuses so I'm going to then proceed now to just put in those um, radiuses those uh, points that are brought around with the compass in uh, um, again a different a, a color a color mark I'm going to use red ink again just to pull those points around draw those widths around onto this vertical line here taken from the back side of the molding detail now what I'm going to do next is I'm simply going to um, bring this from this point that I've established so the first thing that I did there uh, initially I should have put that in right so basically that was the first thing I did was I took from this point here I brought it down okay from this point here I brought through here through the top point and that gave me this point here so that's the first thing I did and I've already gone through that so uh, my new height line is going to be here so I've got a height line here so if I put in those height lines that I selected and this is what I did at, the, at, at first I selected the 100 millimeter height here and I've got my 50 millimeter height so that's going to be the <coughs> height of the new molding detail that increases it proportionally and this is going to be the new height of the molding detail that decreases it proportionally so that was what I started off doing <coughs> I put in my two height lines I selected a point that was going to be suitable so I brought it back here and then I brought it through this top point and I established this point here now this happens to be 30 millimeters in between here between the the uh, molding that's here already established and the new molding detail for the increasing of it okay <clears throat> so the next thing I do is from this point here that I've established here I'm going to draw from this point through this side here all the points that I brought across okay I'm going to draw through this point here now I'm going to continue just before I do that I'm just going to continue this line down okay I'm going to continue as a broken line the same way as I've done this here and I'll do the same here on this one here okay so the next thing I do is I, as I say I bring from this point here through all these points here on the side okay I'm going to keep these as broken lines So this is for the width of the molding. So what I have to do on these ones, in the same way as where I brought these down onto this vertical here, I'm simply on the others, I'm just going to bring them up, okay, onto the horizontal. So I'm doing it in reverse. So very simply, on this here now, I get the other points here now they're established, I swing them around okay do this one here swing that around this one here swing that around and this one here I swing that around now I can do the exact same here or I can simply just bring these points here instead of using instead of using a compass I can simply use a, 40, a 45 degree set square and bring these points up so this point here, bring it up, 45 degrees. So I'm bringing all those points up at 45 degrees. Okay, I'm going to, again, just draw in those curves and the 45 degree lines uh, with the red pen. Okay, so I've brought the widths around, 
okay, onto the horizontal, the XY line. And likewise here, I've brought these ones up to 45 degrees onto the XY line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw in the grid that I drew in here. So in the first instance, this grid here, I'm going to replicate here on the enlargement and the reduction. So it'll be the proportioned grid from which I'm going to establish all of my points. What we have here now is the grid in place for the proportioned increasing of the molding, so the, the proportioned enlargement of the molding, I should say, and the proportioned reduction of the molding. Okay, so I'm going to draw those lines now in hard. And what you'll notice here, there's a, there is a quadrant here. So what we're going to do is, and as a result of the grid here, we have a springing point established. Now, I, that, that springing point there, which happens to be in line with this particular uh, point here, is already established on this back line. So your springing point is going to be on this line here. And because this is the quadrant here, again, this line is established. As I bring down this point here, this gives me the springing point here of the quadrant. Likewise, on the smaller one here, this gives me the springing point of the quadrant. OK, so I'm going to proceed to draw that in at full size. going to be my quadrant here. I'll leave that till the end. This is going to be the position of the recess here. So the quadrant then, I simply have the springing point here, I have my radius, that's the enhanced radius by way of the increase, enlargement of it, so I'm simply getting that as a radius, and I'm swinging that around. Make sure that the point stays there, so I'm swinging that around, that gives me my radius. Okay, now I'm going to draw that in uh, using a French curve and uh, just using uh, the ink, black ink. Smaller one here. So what we have here are the original molding detail here, which is 70 millimeters in height, 25 millimeters in width. And we now have the proportioned uh, enlargement of the molding detail and also the proportioned reduction of the molding detail. Now, what I'm going to simply do is I'm just going to draw in the end grain and shade in the um, molding details. This was the original molding detail, the section detail here of the molding. Uh, that was given, which was 70 millimeters in height and 25 millimeters in width. What I simply did was I wanted to increase the size of that to 100 millimeters in height and obviously have a proportioned width and also to decrease it to a 50 millimeter height and again proportionally decrease it in width. 
So what I did was, from the XY line, I measured up 100 millimeters and I measured up 50 millimeters. I drew a very light line across both heights and then I simply selected a point here on the top here, the 100 millimeter line, right, the new height. And what I did was I selected it in such a way that when I was drawing through this point here, the top point here on the left hand side of the original molding detail, what I simply did was I maneuvered it in such a way that this particular molding would be able to be situated so that it wasn't going encroaching on the original molding detail. Okay, so I established this point here. Okay, that's an essential point for uh, then moving forward. Now that point could be over here, it could be over here, but you're trying to situate it in such a way that your uh, your different molding details are spaced out uh, in, in an even manner, okay? So, um, the next thing I did was I, on the original molding detail, I divided it into a grid, okay? So all of the widths, and all of the heights. And I simply bring them back onto this line here on the molding detail. I extend this point down. That's going to be, all the base points are going to be brought around onto this line here. Okay, then from this point here, I simply bring from this point through, I've already, I've already established this height line here to get this point. But then from this point, I bring through all of these points. Okay, and I establish what will be my new heights here and my new widths. And I simply, again, create this grid. Okay, and I bring these around and bring the vertical up. So I have the grid in place here. I do likewise for the smaller one, the smaller section uh, detail here. So that's 50 millimeters. And what I've simply done is I've simply, where that, those lines hit this 50 millimeter line, I bring across where then this grid, basically what I've done here is I've brought these points then at 45 degrees up, which is the same as pulling it up with a compass, okay? And I've created my grid here. And then I'm simply, what I'm doing is I'm filling in the grid points in the same way as the grid is filled in here, I fill it in on both sides of it by way of the enlargement and the reduction of the molding detail. Uh, the springing point is established very simply. We've got a quadrant here. It happens to be in line with this point here. But even if it wasn't, if it wasn't, uh, say for instance, if it was a segmental uh, curve on the molding detail, all that it simply does is have wherever the, the wherever the springing point is on the original molding detail, I simply bring that across, bring it across, and bring it down, and bring it around, and I and I then re-establish it on each molding detail. And then I obviously have my springing point and my new radius. Okay, so I hope you have found that uh, video useful. Uh, thank you very much.